Hello guys, the Unknown Truth here again. Uh, today I want to do a video on the rapture, okay, because um, we really need to find out uh, what the scripture teaches as far as the rapture goes and what your view is correct. I mean, we need to look, see, uh, if what we have is, you know, our view on the subject is wrong, we need to really diligently search scripture, uh, history as far as what the early church believed and uh, you know, if necessary, we need to go back to the original language and, you know, see what the terminology clearly teaches, okay? Because this is important uh, in defining our views on doctrine, okay? We need to em uh, employ proper biblical hermeneutics and textual interpretation, okay? And uh, make sure that the translation we have is the closest thing uh, to what Paul was preaching uh, to the church of Thessalonica and uh, you know Ephesus and Corinthians and all that church of Corinth uh, you know the best way to do this is to literally try to put ourselves in the shoes of the audience that Paul was preaching to okay we need to have the context we need to have history we have need to have dialect we need to have all these things put together to give us the best picture of the clear doctrine that Paul was teaching okay and to do this um, we have to do the things, like I said, this is, goes for any ancient text, okay, if you've studied um, hermeneutics or, you know, textual interpretations of any kind, I mean, they, they, you know, you'll learn that it takes to get the best idea of what's being taught, you have to basically put yourself in the shoes of the audience, okay, um, you have to go back as far as you can with the most original things, if necessary, if the idea of, uh, is lost through, you know, translation, because, um, sometimes things can be translated and there's not even a word uh, to be translated um, in the new language for instance uh, Greek is so much more specific than English um, Greek has literally four words for love whereas English only has one so you know if you think about it um, some things can be lost in like a you know, with the original Hebrew, Hebrew is pretty specific as well, and sometimes we have to go back and um, get the best uh, interpretation or meaning of the text itself. Um, for instance, because sometimes things aren't conveyed correctly, um, and this is, for instance, is one of the issues in uh, Thessalonians, depending on which um, Bible you use. But I'm here to tell you, and if you do your research prior to 1611 um, the term which most people say is the apostasy or the falling away it was actually translated departure okay and we're gonna go into that I wanna first start out with some context of Thessalonians here because most people who give their views on the rapture of the church like to go to second Thessalonians tear it apart and, uh, you know maybe in their translations kinda get a wrong idea of what the text is really relating to us okay so let's get some context here shall we and I have some other passages and um, scripture for you guys to look at and so cuz I mean this isn't just a simple read one passage study and think you have the best idea okay cuz scripture interprets itself and you have to have the whole context of scripture uh, in order to know what is being conveyed in the text okay guys uh, this is how we determine doctrine. This is how we determine biblical truths, okay? Um, there's no contradictions, okay? There's only explanations and context, okay? If this is the, truly the Word of God, we will see no inerrancy in uh, the original text, uh, no contradictions, you know, of ideas. This only happens with uh, translations. But, anyways, let's get started, okay? First, I want to start here um, with Paul. Okay, like I said, this is his first letter to Thessalonica, or the church of, you know, Thessalonica. Uh, he's writing to the Christians there. Okay, this is the early church. Uh, the first church was in Antioch. I'm going to do a video on that. Some people think the first church is Catholic church. It's completely wrong. But anyways, let's start here. Uh, this is 1 Thessalonians 4. It talks, uh, Paul's talking about the, uh, believers who have died. He's like... Uh, he's saying, you know, we don't want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who has no hope. Okay, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring Jesus, uh, bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. 
According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive or left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them, uh, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Okay? Is this talking about the second coming? You know, we need to ask this. Or is this talking about the catching up or the rapture? Okay, now where it says that the Lord's coming back with his bride here. Okay, but some things you need to focus on here. Um, talks about, you know, those who have died are falling asleep in Christ. Okay, as Paul relates being fallen asleep to, to death. Okay, and those who are alive at the time will not precede those who... Um, had fallen asleep or died uh, that were Christians. Okay, so I wanna, want you guys to get that because you, you have to read. I'd encourage you to read this whole thing, but okay, now here he is talking about the day of the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we need to not write you, for you know very well uh, that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light, and children of the day will not belong to night or the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober for those who sleep at night than those who get drunk, and not, uh, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on, the, putting on faith, love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that we, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. Now, uh, notice he talks about basically part of the armor here. And I encourage you to watch the Armor of God video, and my, uh, you know, defining our purpose. Because of great video series um, basically take take Paul's work out here and show how to defend yourself each day but anyways now we see here that he's telling you know you know the Lord will come like a thief in the night okay this is what defines kind of like the doctrine of imminency there are other scriptures um, but he's saying you know if you're living right you won't be caught on guard guys don't be in darkness you know it shouldn't surprise you, you know the prophecies okay you know, let us walk and be, you know, awake and sober and looking for the coming of the Lord to get us. Okay, this is what he's talking about here. And here he gives them the final instructions and whatnot. But, um, so I want to, I wanted you guys to read that because in his second letter here, in 2 Thessalonians, I think it's 2 Thessalonians 2 where he starts, starts talking to him again. Okay, yes. Now, we saw what he said to him the first trip around. Now, this is the second letter, okay? Concerning, and he talks about the Antichrist in this, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus and our being gathered in, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by prophecy or word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or his worship, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming to be God. I'm going to stop right here for a second. We're going to go through this. Okay, now, why is Paul writing this? Well, they were kind of freaking out, thinking that they missed, um, you know, the rapture, okay, and that they thought that you know, they were already in tribulation, you know, and he's trying to tell them here. Hey guys, you know, don't be unsettled or alarmed by any teaching, whether by prophecy or word of mouth, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't allow anyone to deceive you in any way, for this day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed. Now, here's what I was talking about earlier how some translations um, misinterpret. Now, the NIV is a, a basically a paraphrased version. I was talking to another brother about this, and he, he's. Um, I just use the NIV basically here because it's so it's easily conveyed ideas and but uh, the King James is more related uh, to the best textual interpretation 
of Texas Reptus and um dang I just lost the okay but anyways in other translations you might see falling away occurs uh, occurring or some might even have the original translation which is prior to 1611 uh, which was actual the actual translation of this word rebellion or falling away which is let me find it if I can find it again aha 646 apostasia strong 646 apostasia that is the word they substituted for rebellion prior to 1611 um, um, like in the Latin Vulgate and Texas Reptus and whatnot uh, the word actually is apostasia in the Greek okay like I say sometimes we have to go back to the original Greek because uh, translations correct term just it's been lost or meaning something else because of the terminology or the translation like they didn't have a word but anyways you're, you're getting my idea here read this tell me what it says leave or depart okay this was <laughs> this is not really that great of a translation now um, because if you think about it King James version was written in Old English and sometimes things meant something else like you had replenish okay you have the likes of Jordan Maxwell trying to say the replenish was to make uh, to refill when it actually meant to make full okay in the King James and Old English okay see we have to have the correct context we have to put ourselves in the shoes of those the best way we possibly can using uh, the ancient text uh, the dialects the history all of this coming together to get us give us the best idea okay now let's go back to second Thessalonians here and let's read this the right way don't let anyone deceive you in any way for the day will not come until the departure occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed the man to destruction will oppose and exalt himself over everything that's called God and will set himself up in God's temple proclaiming to be God now I want to cover the second part of this God's temple what is God's temple well uh, some people like to say this is spiritual but this isn't really spiritual because other and like in Daniel 7 uh, and other parts of scripture you have this corroborating evidence um, and especially in Revelation it's all in order uh, if you use the context okay and he, uh, in one passage they even speak of it and I think it's in Matthew uh, you've heard of the prophet Daniel speak of this and I'll tell you and all this uh, but this is physical okay this is the physical third temple that is apostate okay the Jews, you got to remember, they denounced Christ, and they're still basically looking for the Messiah. Unfortunately, it's going to be the Antichrist. But um, this could it, it could even mean both if you want to look at it that way, because uh, the, the the Antichrist is going to have a body. I mean, who could, who knows? Could be a body of a man literally possessed by Satan. Um, but it it does speak of a physical temple. And you know the reason they say you know spiritual because Jesus in Matthew said I will raise this temple up in three days and whatnot. Well, the temple of God goes all the way back to creation, guys. Adam was the original temple of God um, because God breathed His Spirit into Adam. Okay, and Adam was filled with God's Spirit. Okay, so anyways, you have that idea. Uh, but there's so much more, guys. Um, I just wish people would, would kind of realize the context here. And uh, he's like saying, don't don't you remember when, when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And you know what is holding him back so that he may reveal it at the proper time? What is holding him back, guys? What is holding the revealing of the Antichrist? But, but the unknown truth, uh, where's the tribulation fit into this? Now, the f tribulation, guys, if you look at Daniel, uh, Daniel's timeline, and uh, I believe it is in Revelation as well, it might be in Matthew, uh, you're going to have to do the research on this yourself, uh, but we can clearly see, oh, I think it's uh, Revelation 9 or Revelation 8 in Matthew, um, but uh, the, uh, okay, where am I, I just lost my place here. Hold on. Oh, right here. Yeah, and uh, what is holding the Antichrist back? 
Oh, what I was saying is, we can see clearly that the start of the tribulation occurs with the covenant with many um, that the Antichrist makes. That doesn't mean that the Antichrist has already been on the scene. See, we don't, the Antichrist can be on the scene right now, guys. We don't know, okay? And this covenant with many might not even be public, okay? So, I'm, I need, you need to understand these things. Um, see, the Antichrist could already be re revealed, but has the falling away or departure occurred yet? No matter which way you spin it, the Antichrist will be revealed, okay? Um, and I'm of the opinion that it's going to be of a physical, you know, revelation or that you're going to see him come on the scene. He might not be clearly seen as the Antichrist, but... You know, this is why the doctrine of imminency is so important. Why Paul is teaching, you know, you're going to see one take and the other one, everything's going to be normal. And then sudden destruction comes. Notice he's saying, uh, then sudden destruction comes when you hear peace and safety and all that. Because all this relates to the tribulation. He's talking to him about the tribulation, guys. Uh, but let's talk about this. This talks about the restrainer. What is holding him back? Okay, holding back the Antichrist. Now, this could be the church. It could be. Uh, I don't believe it's the church. I mean, it's either the Holy Spirit or an angel given power by God uh, holding him. But if we use the original uh, Greek, we can see that it's probably the Holy Spirit. Um, I had to. I should have went to that with for you guys. But this is good, so you can do some research for yourself. But the secret of lawlessness is already aware, but the one now holds it back with the need to do so till he is taken out of the way. Now this could be the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit could be taken out of the way uh, with the rapture of the church for the most part. And this could bring about um, the whole uh, tribulation all that. This doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit will be moved completely. It doesn't say that. It'll be taken out of the way, moved. Okay, one place to another. Because you're still going to have people coming to the Christ uh, during the tribulation. Um, you, like the Jews, the 144,000, the remnant that has been set aside. And, and you know, the people, there's still going to be people that live through the tribulation. <laughs> it's going to be amazing because uh, when Christ comes back, as Revelation um, 19 says, with his uh, bride, and here... Right here, it talks about the marriage of the Lamb. Let us rejoice, give, be glad, and give glory to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and the bride has made herself ready. It was given to her, clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Now, this is talking about the second coming. How could, if there's no rapture, how could the bride be with Christ at the second coming? Okay, see what I'm saying? Um, and if it's if the rapture is at the end of the tribulation. That doesn't even make sense. They're, you know, the catching up in the air. You know, where where is that in Revelation? Okay, this is in order. Revelation is in order. Okay. <sighs> okay, and uh, this is all for the marriage supper of the Lamb, because the marriage. When do you have the When do you have the reception or the supper? After the marriage. Okay. After the consummation, okay, this all goes back, the whole Jewish marriage, all this corroborates together, okay, there's a reason we're called Christ's bride, okay, look at the context of the Jewish wedding as well, guys, there's so many things that come together, uh, which you don't, in any other view, except the uh, pre-tribulational rapture view of the church, and any, there's no problems, uh, every problem that uh, can be, if, there, if you say the problem can be explained given the context of the scripture and the, the uh, proper uh, translations used and the history to back it up of what the early church believed. Okay, you're saying the early church, you're saying history, you're saying all this. I'm going to show you. Okay, this video is going to be a little hefty, but we have to go through these things. Okay, so um, that's a sneak peek of the other video I'm about to make for you guys. But anyways, he's saying right here in John 14, Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in uh, God, you believe also in me. Remember my father's house has room, rooms. If I'm 
for when not so when I told you I'm going to prayer place for you if I go to prayer place for you I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am okay where's Christ going to prepare a place for us in heaven okay that's exactly where he went when he ascended into heaven to be with the right hand at the right hand of God okay he's preparing a place for us he promises right here if I go to prepare a place for you I will come back and take you to be with me everybody says oh well the rapture is the second coming God you know he didn't even put his feet on the ground at the rapture guys we're caught together in the clouds the same thing with Paul you know Jesus didn't come back you know did Jesus come back when him, Paul saw him okay and heard the voice you saw the bright light no that's not the second coming let's not confuse these things okay you need to you need to use the context here we can't just use one piece of scripture out of context okay um, but anyways read all this he talks about the powerful delusion um, uh, those who have delighted in wickedness now there's a lot of things here that goes in but here's why you need to read this right here this talks about what the early church believed the beginning and end I'm going to post these in the links below but we really need to find out what the truth is because so many people are sitting here promoting things and they don't even back it up with scripture or they use one scripture out of context or you have people saying oh well the rapture was invented by John Darby oh really yeah this goes in showing uh, that the, actually the early church fathers believed uh, in a rapture of the church okay John Darby didn't invent the pre-tribulational rapture and the author of this article does a great job uh, giving some direct quotes from early church members okay that promoted a pre-tribulational rapture why would the early church promote a pre-tribulational rapture if it wasn't biblical okay I want you guys to read this okay it was not invented by John Darby okay there's no ancient Christian writings about the church being raptured for the great tribulation were there hmm? no an explanation see a lot of people like to say that but you have Irenaeus here taught that and therefore when in the end the church shall suddenly be caught up from this okay you have Cyprian Okay, that by an early departure you are taken away and delivered from the shipwrecks and disasters that are imminent. Okay, see, Paul was talking about being delivered from the tribulation to come. That's not saying we're going to have tribulations in everyday life and hardships, but we're not appointed to wrath. Okay, we're, the Christians are not appointed, God's bride is not appointed to the wrath either of the Antichrist which is going to be those who weren't the bride that come to Christ uh, during the tribulation okay and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be hard okay there's gonna be people of God Christians uh, they weren't they're not gonna be the bride but they're gonna be the remnant of Jerusalem and those who deny the mark of the beast that are gonna get beheaded and it's gonna be hard okay there's going to be people that live through the tribulation. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, talks about snatching. Okay. You have Ephraim the Syrian, which I'd argue is the most, one of the best, you know, examples here of the pre tribulational rapture of the church. Okay. It talks about what is imminent or overhanging. Already there have been hunger and plagues, violent movements and nations, and which have been predicted by the Lord. They have already been fulfilled. See, this is what the church of Thessalonica was thought was happening you know they thought oh we're we're seeing all this trials and tribulation and all this you know uh, when's the Antichrist you know or where when's the second coming did we, did we miss the rapture what's going on you know uh, but I mean look at these look at these quotes here guys distinguishing uh, what the day of the Lord is and uh, our gathering to him this is why Paul separated the two okay um, but this is a great article, and people like to uh, people tried to do a, a deal to discredit him here in the listings uh, in the comments. And I think uh, it'd be a great job. Any questions you have regarding this, 
uh, he does a great job um, answering them down here and that's why I wanted to give you this article because I mean it's some solid references as far as the early church and there are a few more he didn't quite list them all but yeah but I want you guys to check out this article I also have another one uh, about the doctrine of eminency uh, is it biblical you know we really need to find these things out like I said uh, and to do that we need to go back to basics okay we need to go back to sound doctrine we need to go back to clear interpretations and especially what the early church believed guys okay okay we need to do that so this one just basically goes into the scripture uh, supporting uh, I, I haven't even dug into basically much of the scriptures at all in support because <laughs> guys all these other views it seems like they only take a little bit of scripture here and there but with the pre-tribulational view everything fits together okay and that's how it should be if you're not using sound doctrine um, you know you're gonna have issues like that okay but this is the one I'm gonna put in the links uh, about the doctrine of eminency and how we should always be ready okay for this because there's nothing stopping it right now okay the uh the funding for the third temple and the uh where Israel is right now and all the prophecies that have already occurred that just goes to show you how close even if you don't believe this how close we really are okay okay and here is a revelation study guide I'm trying to give you these things that you can download keep for yourselves you gotta read these things they go into second Thessalonians here uh, the origins of the term rapture uh, how it's in the Latin rapio um, we cover Matthew 24 uh, about all this okay about everything okay that he puts it puts it all together okay and then here's another one the rapture forms really great place okay this article may be a little lengthy but man it uh, it's it's heavy I mean it goes into some great things as far as uh, the the doctrine in support of the rapture and the pre-tribulational rapture specifically Okay, and how all of it ties into the tribulation and the unique time period of that, and seven and Daniel's seventy week prophecy because it's crucial that all this goes in together the certain uh, the right way as Scripture teaches it. Okay, you can't have things, uh, you know, the Daniel's seventy week prophecy gives us a clear picture uh, that and Revelation. Okay as far as the order of things okay it specifically talks about the antichrist covenant with many and how he breaks it halfway through okay and uh, talks about the destruction of the temple and all that goes into that and the tribulation described okay I mean it's really in depth but clear and, um, and I don't know if I I don't remember if I showed you guys this, but the ter uh, the parable of the ten verses, all of it just goes to show. Okay, I just want us to really be Bereans and search the scripture, uh, search the scriptures on this thing, and go back to basics and sound doctrine. Okay, the church has have has had to do this so many times, guys. I mean, uh, you know, we were falling away. We're falling away so much now because there's so many things out there. People are so confused because you have the Mormons teaching this. Uh, you know, all these satanic influence things uh, that go against Scripture. Book of Mormon, Jehovah's Witnesses don't even teach that Christ is God. You know, and uh, uh, Mormons teach you know Jesus' is brother is Satan and all this and that. Uh, I mean, come on, guys. Let, let's let's stick with sound doctrine. And um, we can do that by going back to basics, okay? Sticking with the raw material and um, the correct translations of this. And I just pray that you guys pray on this and study because we cannot stop learning from God, okay? This is the biblically inspired Word of God. And, you know, He speaks through us, uh, I mean, to, to us through it, okay? So. Anyways, God bless you guys, and uh, you know I'm gonna make some videos uh, ahead. Just bear with me, but 
God bless. Be Bereans. Keep looking up because our redemption definitely draws. Nah, thank you.